So, modern day GPUs, their powers are getting insane, as they get bigger and more powerful, bigger heat sink. This card alone has 4 gigabytes of VRAM on it, a 2060 has 6 gigabytes, a 3060 has 12. There are cards with 24 gigs of VRAM on it. What if I told you that there was a card that was so bare bones, didn't even have fans. And I'm not talking about this ASUS GT610. It may have a big heatsink. The card I'm talking about does not even have that. The card I'm experimenting with today has zero heatsink, runs on a PCI slot, not PCIe, and has 8 megabytes of RAM. Not gigabytes, megabytes. It's by far one of the weakest cards I've ever seen. And it is this card here. PCI slot, one VGA port, and that's it for IO. This is the entire card, the ATI Rage XL. While the ATI Rage XL chip was made in 1998, this graphics card is actually manufactured pretty recently. The 1998 card looked like this. These are taking the chips and modern day manufacturing them. Officially supports DirectX 6, not 11 or 12, but why are these still being manufactured? Well, the chips themselves aren't being made anymore, but as we've seen with other motherboards and stuff, like this one here, they're taking old chips and chipsets that have been thrown out into the recycling, e-wasting them and giving them new life. They've been doing this a lot in China. I don't know for sure, but I suspect this is how they've gotten their life back. But their power is laughable. I got this for like 10 bucks. Its specs are really low. Its GPU clock is 125 megahertz, with its memory clock being 83 megahertz. It's so old it doesn't even have Windows 10 drivers. It's made for something like Windows XP. But, well, let's chuck it onto a test bench. And here we've got it on a test bench. It was really fiddly to actually get working for some reason. When it was in this top PCI slot, would not work no matter what. Had to put it in the second one on my test bench. Then if we boot it up, it does run Windows 10, once again with no drivers. Now it's currently running at 800 by 600, which is not a very good resolution. But if we put it on the recommended, which is 1024 by 768, for some reason it creates this black bar, it moves everything across. This resolution has been fine on other monitors that I've tried it on. But for some reason on my main test bench monitor, it just doesn't. And 1280 by 1024 is apparently out of range, no matter what monitor I put it on. Now, sadly, I don't actually have a system lying around from its generation. The closest I've got is this, which is an X58 with an Xeon in it. So I'm not going to be testing it with any older versions of Windows where it's actually got drivers, sadly. But I'll tell you this now. It was a low-end CPU even then, so it's none of the results were going to be good. Just to give it some sort of advantage, I'm keeping it on 800 by 600 And with that, let's test a few games on it. Now, I didn't have a VGA capture card set up, nor could I record on the system because of the card. So I had to record the screen off of my camera. But I tried a lot of games in order to try and be fair to the card. A lot of which just flat out didn't even open. Like CSGO, Sega Mega Drive Classics, Sonic Adventure 2, and Minecraft. There were a few that started to boot up and then just crashed when getting into the gameplay, like Team Fortress 2 and Sonic Lost World. There are plenty of games I tried that were CPU bound that actually ran pretty smoothly. Like, yes, the original Doom can run on this. Even more modern games like Terraria or Undertale, even Sonic Mania. Papers Please was also CPU bound. I also tried Half-Life 2, but I'm pretty sure it was on software rendering as it was running at like 20 FPS. And then one of the only games that were 3D that I managed to get running off of the card and not CPU bound was Portal 2 which quite literally ran it 1 FPS. It was not good. I will say this card does get, especially when it's got a game running on it, it does get surprisingly hot. Not ridiculously so, but enough. Not enough that I would think about putting a heatsink on it manually, but it's enough to be weird that the manufacturer didn't. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about the ATI Rage XL. I think this card is fascinating. Now something I will say is I made a whoopsies and I accidentally ordered two of them. I ordered one, then I ordered a second one because the first one didn't look like it was going to arrive. And then the first one did arrive and then so did the second one. Now I've got two. But anyway, moral of the story, this card sucks and also kind of sucked when it first came out. And for some reason they're still being made today. So I mean if you just needed a visual output, it would do the trick and is pretty cheap. If you were like experimenting on an old machine and didn't have an old card lying around, or you were just getting into old machines and you had a motherboard with a PCI and no PCIe, it might be good for something then. I can so I can think of use cases for it, but it's not very powerful and in a modern situation, there's not many uses for it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as it would help out a ton as I'm a small tech channel. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see a video about a CPU that's 12 years old testing that, and you'd be surprised by the outcome.
click here. And if you want to see what YouTube recommends for you on my channel, click here. If you want to just subscribe, make sure you click the button here or down below. And I really hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye. Any other weird cards or tech like this, make sure to comment them down below as well.